talking today with Mike Elk. There's been a very significant development, first in the United States, of a union election in which the workers won the election at Amazon Staten Island. And Mike has been covering it. He's with paydayreport.com, has uh, been active uh, covering the Bessemer struggle as well. We want to talk to him today about the lessons at Bessemer and why they were able to get a victory at Staten Island. So welcome, Mike. You know, this is a huge victory for the labor movement. Uh, I mean, you can hear the tectonic plates of the labor movement shifting. Uh, you know, there's such a, a deep labor establishment and, and labor intelligentsia and labor bureaucracy, which says these kind of victories can't happen, particularly since this was a victory by an independent union, right? Uh, this was a union that was crowdfunded, that was funded directly by workers, that was formed uh, by workers who were involved in a wildcat strike two years ago against, uh, you know, unsafe COVID practices. Uh, you know, Christian Smalls was fired during that strike and he became the president of the union. Uh, a lot of people wrote this off. Uh, Christian Smalls even called out Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez last night uh, for abandoning uh, the effort there. Uh, so, you know, this is a big, big, big deal. Uh, and, and I think we're, it's going to raise a lot of questions. I mean, unions have been spending a lot of money for a lot of years to raise unions. And here's this sort of self-started union uh, that went out and uh, did it on their own. Um, and I think it really raises a deep question, which is, look, unions are huge bureaucracies. People don't trust bureaucracy. When folks form an independent union, they feel like, oh, yeah, we have some ownership over this. This is something we built. And I think we've seen the success of this model here in Staten Island. Uh, I mean, to win a 5,000 person warehouse, I mean, the Teamsters sometimes spend millions of dollars trying to do this and fail. <laughs> and what did they do differently? Because you did cover the defeat at Bessemer, why don't you compare the Bessemer experience, and they were defeated again, apparently, although they're challenging it, with the what they did right in, in Staten Island? Well, I think the big difference there is that in Staten Island, they went on strike. They took actions. They got the attorney general of the state involved in you know, calling out the company, and, get it, and they got workers reinstated. They fought. They acted like a union before they were an official union. Uh, and this was the key. Uh, and they were out there every day serving food. And it wasn't, you know, because I went down there to Bessemer and it was paid union staff out there acting in a very generic way, telling people. I, one of the guys said at one point, one of the union organizers with RWDSU said, you know, a union's like an insurance policy. You only know it's there when you get in trouble. That's the wrong mentality uh, of a union. Uh, and I think we've seen uh, a big win here uh, in Staten Island that's going to shake up how people talk about things. And the what are the the company now uh, is also being charged with trying to thwart the workers' efforts, violating the rules, even though they were already acted against by NLRB for violating the last election. It seems like they have contempt for the labor laws, and actually, they they did many of the similar things to prevent the workers from voting for the union. Yeah, you know, they fired folks. It, it backfired big time. Uh, when they called the cops on workers that were trying to deliver food to uh, Amazon workers. Um, you know, there were a lot of mistakes the company made. Uh, and I think the biggest mistake they made was underestimating uh, how much they would spend. Uh, one of the workers, Christian Smalls, who's the president of the union, joked that, wow, uh, Jeff Bezos was up in space. We were down here organizing. <laughs> and, you know, the, the, actually, the, these companies, Bezos' company, conspired uh, with their lawyers to thwart democratic rights. I mean, they were they, these law firms, they spent millions on these law firms, and they're actually conspiring how to prevent workers to have the rights. You think that should be prosecuted? I mean, it seems like if I was conspiring to violate the laws, you would be attacked by the government. But it seems like they have impunity, and there's no prosecution of them for a conspiracy to violate labor laws, to fire workers and, and illegally take away your rights. You know, my father, who was a union organizer for UE for many years, used to joke, you know, the penalty for, uh, you know, vi you know, firing a worker, you have to post a piece of paper. The penalty for bank robbing was you had to post a piece of paper. We'd all be bank robbers. I I'd, I'd go rob a bank this afternoon if I could pull it off. So, you know, it's pretty uh, fascinating uh, to see this all, uh, to see workers overcome that. And I think when workers feel like they really own a union, uh, then they feel like, you know, they can really do something. Uh, and really want to risk their neck. Nobody wants to risk their neck for a bureaucracy. And Stuart Applebaum, who uh, is with the uh, Retail Workers Union that uh, 
Retail Wholesale Department Store Workers Union, was also uh, elected to the board of the National Endowment for Democracy, uh, which is giving $75 million a year to the AFL-CIO Solidarity Center. They called him a labor activist. Uh, what's Stuart Applebaum's role in what, ha what is happening in uh, Bessemer? Um, well, I mean, you know, he's the leader of the union drive down there. Uh, you know, they didn't invest a lot of resources in the first one. They didn't take militant action. Uh, you know, he's been involved in that. Uh, a nice person. Uh, but, you know, I think it's it's interesting, you know. And this latest effort, it seems like the AFL-CIO did not mobilize nationally as they did around the first campaign. There's no national campaign to back them up. Uh, it seems like the, they kind of just puttered out. I mean, and that's why it's a, it's a kind of a shock to about what happened. Yeah, I, I think it certainly puttered out. Uh, I don't think it was much of a shock that they lost there. I could have told you that based on the fact they weren't doing much. Uh, but we are going to need a national campaign to get a union contract at Staten Island. Uh, this is going to be a very tough fight. Uh, it's going to be... Um, you know, it's it's so going to be it's tough. Not, it's not and, 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 and I think I think I think if you look at what happened though with Starbucks, where they built this sort of organic uprising, uh, I think it shows that it's very possible. The Teamsters now want to uh, work with other unions and others to organize uh, Amazon around the country. How do you think that should go with the lessons of the Staten Island and an independent union? Um, you know, I think I think you know we have to really start looking at models like UE. We have to really. Uh, you know, I think you're starting to see somewhat of a union democracy movement. Uh, there were some Teamsters reformers. I don't want to call those guys saints because uh, they're not the people that took over. Uh, you know, the Teamsters for Democratic Union crowd isn't very democratic anymore, uh, but they're trying to do slightly better than the Hoffa people did. Uh, and so certainly this sort of raises the ante for them, it raises the antes for them uh, to do more. And, you know, today the uh, Teamsters came out and said, you know, they're going to invest a lot. So I think we're going to see a lot more. Uh, organizing. And this issue of democracy, you've said that this is a democratic union that was formed by Christian Smalls and others. How do you see that taking place in the labor movement as a whole? Because uh, you have a corporate type structure in a lot of unions, top down, as you had in the Bessemer thing. I mean, it seems like that's the structure that really dominates the labor movement at this point. I think that's a, a good point is that, you know, it's going to lead to huge reform of those kind of models. Uh, I think it's going to raise a lot of questions. I think you're going to see a lot more workers wanting to, you know, try independent unions and maybe after they unionize, think about organizing with someone. I mean, you know, the big argument that I think a lot of unions make for why they want to go with a big union is, oh, we can pay for all these lawyers. Well, you know, if you're relying on broken labor law to organize, <laughs> you're losing already. It's a, it's a right? long wait. It's a long wait. Yeah. And you, you and your paydayreport.com, you've been covering this as an independent journalist. What's the role of independent labor media? Because you've been in a fight to defend independent labor journalists, and it seems like there are more labor journalists uh, growing around the country, getting support uh, because of the stories. We need independent labor media. Look, none of the, you know, so much of the labor media is bought and paid for by the union leadership. None of them saw this coming, right? <laughs> And I think that's exactly why you need independent labor media that's willing to go out there and say, hey, this is happening. It's a big deal. And it's something that we need to be paying attention to. We saw this during the strike wave. You know, we were recognized by Project Censored because we predicted the strike wave 18 months out. The AFL-CIO was literally sending around articles saying the strike wave isn't happening and these guys are lying about their numbers, right? So, you know, I think it raises some questions of just how incompetent the labor movement is. Okay, well, I want to thank you very much for joining us. We've been talking with Mike Elk a labor journalist at paydayreport.com, was on this uh, covering the Staten Island and was optimistic of what happened when most of the corporate media, of course, were uh, silent and most people found it unexpected. So thanks for joining us, Mike. Thanks.